Welcome to Be Still My Soul. Today, we'll be looking at Ephesians chapter 2. This is definitely one of my favorite books from this Bible. And today, I'm joined by my beautiful sisters, Alva Belial Arnell, Marky Avala, and Viani Montero. And I am Pauline Romero. And today, we will be hearing all about grace and unity in Christ. But before we get started, we invite you now, our viewers and listeners, to join us as we begin with our opening prayer. Please join us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything you give us, for health, for life, Thank you for seeing the cup half full instead of half empty, Lord. Thank you. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the ability to understand your grace and your amazing powers by which you work for us. We thank you, dear Lord, for your mercy, for your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything you do for us, everything you give us. And right now, Lord, we just want to thank you for the Holy Spirit, the advocate that you made possible when you died on the cross for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for us, for loving us so much, loving us even more than our earthly parents. Thank you, Lord Jesus, you shed your blood for us. And that's our protection and our salvation. We ask you, Lord, to send the Holy Spirit to be with us right now. To give us that revelation, that word, that message, something for someone or for many people who are listening. You know what you have designated for each of us to see, Lord. These are not our words. They're yours. And we humbly place ourselves at the foot of the cross and ask you to speak through us, Lord Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit, soul of our soul, we worship and adore you. Enlighten and guide. Strengthen and console us. Tell us what we ought to do and command us to do. We promise to be submissive in everything you permit to happen to us. Only show us what is your will. Amen. And I'll do something a little different. I'll ask the ladies to join me as we call down the Holy Spirit. Their favorite song. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We be here with your presence. Fill us with your power, live inside your God, welcome Holy Spirit, be here with your presence, fill me with your power. Live inside of me. The Unity Prayer. May our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the eternal Father. Amen. 
the family prayer. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, in you we contemplate the splendor of true love. To you we turn with trust. Holy family of Nazareth, grant that our families too may be places of communion and prayer, authentic schools of the gospel, and small domestic churches. Holy family of Nazareth, may families never again experience violence, rejection, and division. May all who have been hurt or scandalized find ready comfort and healing. Holy family of Nazareth, make us once more mindful of the sacredness and inviolability of the family and its beauty in God's plan. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, graciously hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our opening prayer. We will now be going to Ephesians chapter 2. And we invite you to send us a message or interact with us on Facebook. We welcome your comments and your interaction. Perhaps you too can share your revelation with us. Ephesians chapter 2. As for you, you are dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the immersible riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you. It is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. Therefore, remember that at what at one time you, Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision by those called the circumcision, which is done in the flesh by human hands, were at that time without Christ, alienated from the community of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were, were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. He who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through the flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came to proclaim peace, peace to you who are far off, peace to the Jews who were near. Through him, we, the two people, approach the Father in one spirit. Now, you are no longer strangers or guests, but fellow citizens of the holy people. You are of the household of God. You are the house whose foundations are the apostles and prophets, and whose cornerstone is Christ Jesus. In him, the whole structure is joined together and rises to be a holy temple 
in the Lord. In him, you too are being built to become the spiritual sanctuary of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. We now invite you to go and prayerfully reflect on this chapter that we just read. It will be scrolled on the screen for those who do not have a Bible. And we invite you to spend some time in prayer with the word. And we will do the same. When we return, we will share with you what the Holy Spirit has enlightened upon our hearts to share. In you
is on thy side. Welcome back to Be Still My Soul. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 2 today. And I believe Alba is ready. Thank you, ladies. Um, it's great to be back on the show, first of all. Um, Ephesians, the first thing that, that caught my attention, grace through faith mm-hmm. in Christ Jesus. What are we without him? What are we without faith? And um, this, this past couple of months that I've been away from the show, my faith has been put to test. Um, I have cried. <laughs> I have laughed. Um, I have asked you ladies and other people to pray for me. And I know that God is listening and that is why I am still here because if it was only me, I wouldn't be able to be here. God gives us the graces to have faith, to to have faith, to have hope in him for our salvation. Man alone cannot do it. Um, it It is here, it is here on verse eight. For, for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from you it is the gift of god it is not from works so no one may boast so we cannot boast that oh i'm here because oh i did this i'm here because i paid so much money you can have all the money in the world you can have all the riches But if you do not have God in your life, nothing will happen. You will be lost. I can say that I was a lost soul, but I'm finding myself because I am following. I'm doing my best to go on the right path, to leave everything in God's hands. I want all his graces because God does not look at one person is better than the other. We are all the same in his kingdom. And we sometimes forget that. We want to give up. I wanted to give up. I wanted to give up many times. A few years back when I fell ill, I I, I gave up. I questioned God, why? Why me? Why not someone else? Why are you putting putting me through this? And I can go back to a year ago. I was still questioning him because I was leaning on men in general. I was not leaning on my God the way I was supposed to. I was going with what people had to say. I was not. I was reading the word, but I was not understanding it. I was not listening to what God was telling me. God tells us every day we're all the same. We have to have faith because we will be saved through that faith. It is a difficult road. It is not easy if you do not let go. And I have, like I told a very good sister in Christ on Monday, I let go. And I mentioned it today, I let go. I'm letting go of what man wants from me. And I need to hold on to what God wants from me and for me. Because he's the only one who will lead me to salvation, who will lead us to salvation. No one else. We are all equals in the kingdom of God. Verse 19 says says it. So then you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the holy ones and members of the household of God. One home, one family, unity, And we have it there. 
in our background, on our background, Mark and I, unity in Christ. Lean on Mother Mary. She's always there to guide you, to guide us. Don't, don't let your, your um, trust go to man. Go, let your trust go to God. He never lets you down. Never. It may not seem that way when it, something is happening in your life. But at the end of the day, you will say, he did it for me. He is there. Sorry. <laughs> he is always there for us, brothers and sisters. Um, let's, in these days that many things have been happening with the pandemic, and we have discussed this many times, families getting separated, let us unite. Let us unite as one family in God, in Christ. And then we will be one family, a, a human family. But remember, our heavenly father is always there for us. Just have faith. Listen to the word. Go to mass if you can. If you cannot. Watch it on Facebook or on your TV. Listen to his word. His word is always right. And every day when I read some scriptures, or when I get a reflection, I'm like, God is telling me something. He is talking to me. Things that I overlook, little things that we overlook. God let us know even though it might be wrong for us, he knows, he lets us know that it is the right thing for us. So let let go, but let God, let's let God have faith. That is my share. Thank you, Alva. Um, very powerful, yes, faith. Um, I think we all struggle with faith, myself included. I think it's, 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 you know, faith is something that it's hard to believe in the things that you don't see. <laughs> it's very, very hard and, and we all struggle. I myself struggle. I'm struggling right now with my faith. To be quite honest, I am struggling. And Yet I still pray. And I lean on God. Because he's all I know. I still believe that he can do miracles. I still believe that he's the same yesterday, today, and he's going to be the same tomorrow. So yes, at this point in my life, I am struggling, but I'm holding on. And this whole passage talks about faith and grace. Grace. You know, God's power, God's favor on us that we do not deserve. We don't deserve his grace. We're all sinners. Whether you want to believe it or not, you're all sinners. Whether you're, you're doing good, we still sin daily. And, and we still struggle. And, and we come to God and when we sin, we, I, I find myself personally, when I sin, I find myself coming to God and saying, God, please forgive me. Help me with this. Please help me change this from me. Work in me. Or I ask, what am I doing? What, what is it that you want from me, God? So I pray, and, and, and if you notice, my background is Mother Mary because I love her so much. And she gives us the graces. I'm that girl who has a rosary in her purse, who has the rosary under her pillow, who just holds her rosary because she needs that faith. And I know God is with us. 
as Alva said. You know, he's there, he listens. Sometimes you don't believe it. And sometimes you don't hear him. And I so badly need to hear from him. But I still believe that God works. And he says it here, you know, he works, he does it. Because the glory is for him. It's nothing that I will do. It's nothing that I can do or anybody can do. It is God who will do it so that no one can boast. It is God who will, who will work in us. It is God who will get all the glory. And in these trying times where evil is just rampant, you know, it's just, it's, it's amazing, you know, people are, 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 they're not responding to God's call. They're not listening, but he gives us that grace. He still waits for us. He sends the Holy Spirit to come and, and, and nudge us and say, you're going the wrong way. Turn back, turn back to me. Come, let me give you that grace. Come back to me because that is our life here is short. We may feel like life is long, but our life here is very short and you never know. You never know what will happen in your life. Right now, at this moment, Dr. Eck is struggling for his life. A whole nation is praying. People outside of this nation is praying. And I can just feel the pain. Of, his, of, the, of the family, you know, and I put myself in their situation and I said, what would I do? What would I be? I would be asking for prayers. I would, you know, the same as what they're doing, leaning on their faith. Life is not, is not promised to anyone. We never know what will happen in our lives. So my message to you is go love your family. Appreciate every moment you have. Everything that is given to you, every goodness that is given to you, God gave it to you. Remember that. Love your family. That is, that is the representation of God. You know, if, if you're not living the right way, turn back. He will give you the grace. And we pray for those loved ones who are not you know, have not come to God or don't know God, we pray for them. So pray for those. I've been told several times, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. I give up. <laughs> Many times I give up. <laughs> Many times the flesh gets the best of me and I give up and I'm saying, I'm done. <laughs> but then someone comes along and says, don't give up. Let me pray for you. And I was telling a sister in Christ yesterday that it's hard for me to pray for my situation. I can pray for anybody and I can believe for anybody. <laughs> and I will believe it and I will have this faith and I will, you know, God is good. But for me, I'm like, mm, okay, I don't know. <laughs> so I can have faith for everyone else. And then she told me, it said, um, I think she heard a teaching from Padre Pio. And Padre Pio had said the same thing. It's hard for me to pray for myself. Someone else needs to pray for me. And he said she, she feels like God designed it that way so that we don't, like what this, the scripture says here, so that we don't boast, so that we don't take the glory, so that we don't say, I did it. Because it's not us that will do it. It's through the power of God that, that he will, you know, give us these miracles, give us the desires of our hearts. It is God who will do it, not us. So we, so we will not take the glory for it. And she said, this is why I pray for you. <laughs> this is why I am praying, you know. And, and I said, oh, well, you know, that makes sense. Because when we pray, we pray very emotional. Because for us, whatever it is, trial that we're facing, that's like, you know, it's right in our face. It's like you cannot ignore it. Sometimes you try to, but sometimes you cannot ignore it. So 
this is why it's important um, to be in community, to have sisters in Christ who will uplift you, who will pray for you when you cannot pray, who will give you that hand and lift you up when you're down in the dumps and pick you up and pray for you when you cannot pray. And I find myself doing that for others too. When they can't, I can help them. And, and I can only do that to God. I, I really, I, there's no other way to explain it, but I can only do that because God gives me the strength. God gives me power and I, and I can have all the faith for them when they don't have it. And it's the same for me. My sisters in Christ have all the faith for me, for me, when sometimes I don't have it. So this, to me, you know, the scripture talking about, you know, grace and reconciling back to God, you know, I mean, our journey here is for us to come in communion with God. Our journey here, because once our life ends, we will not have that opportunity. That opportunity will be gone. And God is just waiting for us with open arms. And he's saying, I, I want you back. Come back to me. Stop, stop living in the flesh. Stop being disobedient. Read the word. Listen to what I'm telling you. He nudges us. That is why we don't have peace. When you don't have peace, it's because you're not, in, not, not doing God's will. So I love this. And my message is for you is, you know, turn back to our Heavenly Father. He is amazing. He is good. He has been there, and I constantly have to remind myself of the ways that he has been there for me, of the ways that he has helped me out, of the ways, of the things he has done in my life, of the amazing people that he has surrounded me with, of how he has helped me so much times. I constantly have to remind myself of that because we tend to forget and we tend to turn away sometimes. And even us, we have to turn back. But like I said earlier, we hold on. I hold on to faith. I hold on to that small little hope sometimes. But I keep holding on and I keep praying. I keep praising and I keep believing. And when I can't do it for myself, I have amazing sisters in Christ who believe for me, who pray for me, and who are there for me. So that's my sharing. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing all that. With you and Alva, um, I can tell that the Holy Spirit is working very powerfully through both of you in your pain, in your suffering. Thank you for being so open and honest about how you're feeling and your journey that you're on right now. We'll be right back with Fill My Soul. Take a short break at this time. In you I rest, in you I found my Shop easier with Atlantic Bank's chip and contactless card. Simply tap your own card to pay for purchases of up to $300 at any Atlantic Bank POS machine. It's easy, it's secure, it's contactless. Be still my soul, the Lord is on thy side. Welcome back to Be Still My Soul. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 2. And I think Marky is raring to go now, right Marky? No. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, it's a beautiful passage. It reminds us of where we have been, how far we have come, and how much more there is to go. And we have to remind ourselves, especially now through these trying and troubled times, who we are in Christ. And we, I go back a little to verse one, the first chapter, where it says that we are God's chosen people. We're all chosen by God. And we even said, 
he's talking, Ephesians is addressing the holy ones. And he says, who are the holy ones? Those honestly striving to be his or her, holding on to his or her Christian faith, striving towards their Christian faith. And we all do that. We strive, we work hard, we are devoted, we try and stay faithful in a world in, of sin. We are living in a time where there's great transgressions, where there's great sin happening around us. And we are affected by that. All of us are. And in the beginning passage, it reminds us of, it says, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you once lived following the age of this world. So we were once there. But he came and he rescued us. God saved us. We turned to Christ and he saved each one of us. It says, but it says here, um, but God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgression, brought us to life with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And each one of us said that by God's saving grace. And it says, all of this is a gift from God. God has gifted us with this grace. It says, for grace, by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you. It is the gift of God. And that is in verse 8. And I love how it says, we are his handiwork. He created us in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. And Vianney and Alva, when y'all were talking and sharing, you guys have to realize that you have been doing God's work. Even through your doubts, even through your trials and through your tribulations, you have truly been doing God's work. And I love this part here. I have in my a little side note here. It says, The core Christian belief is this. We are saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. We are saved not by doing good works, but in order to do good works. Our salvation is God's gift to us. How we live is our gift to God. And so we have been carrying out our gift remaining faithful. But did it say it takes just one little mustard seed of faith? Just holding on to that faith is our gift to God. And God's gift to us is for us to go out and do that good work because he has forgiven us for our transgressions, for our sinfulness. We have arrived. We are there and we work daily to stay steadfast to God's word. And we have our trials and we too have our tribulations. But we stand strong. So behind me, I chose this picture. It's all hands uniting together, holding on to each other. Every color, every form, it doesn't matter who you are, rich, poor, black, white, I don't care. We all go through this and we all struggle and we strive. But God called us into him to become one. All of us join together, we hold hands and we become one in Christ to help lift each other up, to help each other arrive together as one in Christ. Jesus has called us to him. He has promised us salvation to remain faithful in him. We will get that together, united as one. We don't get there alone. This walk is not to be walked alone. And we have seen that 
through this week. As you have mentioned, Dr. Eck, how we all united as one, praying as a country, praying to help each other out. Our sister in Christ, Ven, cried out for her cousin. We all came together as one, united in prayer for a good man that we all know that has touched each person one way or the other. And it's beautiful that we can come together and uplift each other and carry each other through this. We are never alone when we are in God's church, when we're united as one. We are one family, one family in Christ. So I think this is just a lovely, lovely passage. I think I'd like to also touch where it says one in Christ at the bottom here. It says, we're at that time without Christ. We were alienated from the community, strangers to the covenants, to his promise, Christ promised to us, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. We all have walked in sin. We have all walked a wrong path, but we all came back to our Christ, our God. It's not too late for anyone out there who is not walking the right path and you know who you are. If you feel alienated, if you have no hope, you can find that in Christ. You can find that in a community of people who love Christ. We can all go there together and we can all help each other out. So turn to your God, pray, turn to your church, go to confession, seek help because you need more than that. It's not just confession. You need to forgive yourself. Maybe forgive others that might have hurt you. But it starts with you realizing where you are right now. Where do you stand right now today? Are you with Christ? Are you for Christ? Are you conformed to the flesh? Are you a slave to the flesh? You want peace? You want love? You find that in Christ. And you build your family on that. And I think that's my sharing. Thank you. You touched on something so important. We may be many, but we're all one. No matter what and who we are, we're all children of God. And that's just a powerful statement because some people are walking the path and some aren't. But we're powerfully reminded in this particular chapter, and, and it was said twice, not once. If I never get it the first time, you can probably remind me the second time. Hey, <laughs> you were dead. We made dead ladies. We were actually dead before we came to a personal relationship with Christ. I mean, if you stop to think about that from hit, but like, that's mind blowing. Your heart will stop for a second there. I was dead in my transgression. I was a walking dead. Now I'm beginning to understand these horror movies when they talk about the walking dead. Before we came to a personal relationship with God, we were all walking dead. We were living in sin. And it says it in verse one, you were dead through the faults and sins. Once you live through them, according to this world. And then again, he repeats it in verse 11. So if you never understand where it come from the first time, it repeat it in verse 11. Remember that you were pagans, even in your flesh. 
Wow. Told us twice, not once. Remember, you're human. And if you live as a human, what will happen? You won't have peace. You will have disunity. You will have worries. You will have anxieties. You will have fear. And the list goes on. And then what happens when one person turns to the Lord? And I want to talk particularly and specifically today to married couples, to people who are married. Because what really touched me was verse 14. This entire chapter touched me, but for some reason, the Lord is telling me to speak about this right now. Verses 14 to 16. And it says, for Christ is our peace. He who has made the two people one, destroying in his own flesh the wall, the hatred which separated us. He abolished the law with its commands and precepts. He made peace in uniting the two people in him, creating out of the two one new man. He destroyed hatred and reconciled us both to God through the cross, making the two one body. Ouch! Through the cross. The cross. The cross, I don't know, jolly time. The cross is not any road paved with gold. The cross is suffering. Jesus chose the cross to show much, how much he loved us. And in First John chapter 4, verse 19, if we go back to like verse 17 to 19, it says, when do we know that we have reached a perfect love? When in this world we are like him in everything and expect with confidence the day of judgment. That means if I know I'm dead, I want to look forward to the day of judgment because I've come to peace. I have come to perfect love. I've come to be like Jesus. It goes on to say, there's no fear in love. Perfect love drives away fear. For fear has to do with punishment. Those who fear do not know perfect love. So let us love one another since he loved us first. But often in marriages, it is difficult to love. Many of you may be facing the fact that you're down on your knees, you're praying, and your spouse just ain't getting it. Your spouse, your spouse is carrying on like there's no tomorrow, there's no day of judgment. You might be doing things that are really creating some serious heartaches. And of course, his or her soul may be in trouble and you're praying and you're trusting the Lord and you're not getting your breakthrough. I didn't choose. The photo behind me was divinely chosen for a reason because of what the Lord wants me to share. But when I came into my own troubles, I would spend a lot of time in quiet prayer sometimes praying more than four rosaries a day. And I did have a friend that would often come to my home and pray with me, and I thank God for her. She helped me to hold on when I wanted to give up. And I had some beautiful experiences while praying the rosary. I would sometimes even smell roses. 
And I just felt that peace from the Lord. And it helped me to hold on, to not give up. And as I began to draw closer to the Lord and to realize that God really graced us. And the more we take advantage of the sacraments that we are offered, the more God will pour down his graces upon us. Confession. Sometimes I would go to confession once a week and my family would actually look at me and say, Lord, you sinful. And they would mock me. But the reality is the minute we begin to understand perfect love, we will understand that every waking moment we are prone to sin. And if I could confess hour upon hour, I would do so. Because of our flesh, we're prone to sin. And sometimes it's not what we say, but it's what we do. Or sometimes it's not what we do, but what's in our heart, or what's in our mind, you know? Your poor husband might be thinking one thing, and you that are thinking something completely different about him. Or your poor wife, and there you are accusing your wife or your husband, or thinking that. I can't trust them. I can look at them again. I can't phone again. I wonder who he talked to. I wonder who the message. And they might be completely innocent of what we're thinking or what might be in our heart. And a lot of people don't understand the role of Mother Mary, even as Catholics. We do not adore Mother Mary. We honor her. She is our mother that Jesus left when he took his final breath on that cross. And we pray that in a sorrowful mistress chaplet. We're doing that every morning as a group. And it says it right in the chaplet in one of the decades that when he took his last breath, she became our mother for all of us. She is the greatest intercessor. And she has helped me along my journey, especially in my marriage. Where, as I have openly shared, I felt many times it was the clash of the titans I was living out. And she has helped me to become more like her because she has prayed for me. It's not her who has done it. But she has gone to her son to pray for me and to help me. So when I am near that occasion to sin, I am prompted. I don't always pass the test, let me tell you, because none of us can reach perfect love whilst we're on earth. But we strive for perfect love. So I become more conscious now, and I don't spit out what might be in my mind. And when I know it's not a good thought, ask the Lord to help me to get rid of that thought that might be actually wrong, might be accusing someone of something that is not the truth. So Mother Mary is our greatest intercessor and she has really, really helped me. And the Lord tells us that it is only through the grace of God and true faith that we are saved. Okay. How do we come to this? We can't do anything to get that grace. It's God who will do it for us. And guess what? It's others who pray for us. I look back at my very life and my own marriage. And I said, man, Lord, why have you graced me with still being married? What's the purpose? What's the reason? And every time I question, I get this answer. And it's from Ephesians chapter 1. And I've been quoting it since last week, Friday. So everyone I know and I will say it here. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 says, May you understand 
with what extraordinary power he acts in favor of us who believe. I don't know who has been praying for me. I, I believe it's my parents. In fact, I know it's my parents, but I know other people do pray for me because I have a faith that I cannot explain. I, it's not of my doing, but I have a faith that I believe for other people when they don't believe. And I claim it for them. That's, that's one of the gifts that God gave me to believe for others and to keep telling people, never give up, never give up, never give up. No matter what, never give up. And I can give story after story. If, if I had given up, I wouldn't be married today. If I would have given up, I wouldn't be in business today. If I had given up, I wouldn't still be the owner of Western Pines today. And the list can go on and on and on of things that I could have chosen to give up on because they were too difficult, too Herculean. But I prayed and asked God to give me the strength and I know others were praying for me. And I know Mother Mary prays for all of us who call out to her. And so for all of you who are struggling right now, for all of you who are saying, this is it. I am tired. I am fed up. I train it. I will know, right? I have that image of the boxers and, and the referee throwing in the towel, fight over, cling, fight done. The Lord is saying right now, and don't put limitations on the time frame. Let's trust the Lord. Surrender now. Marky, you and I did a surrender retreat. And as I think about it, my heart becomes so full. The ring of fire. How oh, the Lord protects us when we completely trust him. He won't abandon us. And, you know, I was really touched with also verses 19 to 22. Because how could we go from being so sinful? I mean, when I think about it, I'm so humbled. Because I am no longer a stranger or a guest, but I'm a fellow citizen of the holy people. And I say that with humility. I'm not being boastful here. I'm not being arrogant. I didn't do anything to earn that. All I did was obey the Lord. And there were moments, there were times when I really wanted to give up. There's still times when certain situations I face, I'm like, Lord, how will we overcome this? You tell me because I don't understand it. And he just keeps telling me, be still. You don't worry how I will help you to overcome this hurdle, this great obstacle that you keep facing now for 18 years. You don't worry, Pauline, I will do it. And it continues to say, you are the household of God. You are the house whose foundations are the apostles and prophets. So out of our homes, ladies, will come apostles and prophets. Maybe we are some of that already. And whose cornerstone is Christ Jesus? The cornerstone that was rejected, we accepted. We didn't reject that cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and rises to be a holy temple. Me, humble little me, humble you, Alva, humble you, Viani, humble you, Marky. We have become holy temples. And all who are walking this path, it's not just the four of us, it's all who have come 
to that relationship with the Lord, a personal relationship with the Lord. And it says in verse 22, in him, you too are being built to become the spiritual sanctuary of God. Imagine we have gone from being very sinful, being in trouble that we could go to eternal damnation, to now knowing that we will have eternal salvation. That is only by God's grace. And so when we are at the point where we want to give up, when we're saying, I tired of this wife I live with, I tired of this man, he's giving me no hope. Or maybe he or she have actually walked away already. They've given up. The Lord is telling you, don't give up. Don't join that towel. Because remember, they're still in darkness, but you aren't. You know better. You get down on your knees and you pray for them. It takes one person to save a marriage. It takes one person to save any situation. You just need to have faith like that of a mustard seed. And if you've ever seen a mustard seed, you know it's so tiny. And yet when that mustard seed begins to grow, it becomes one of the biggest trees we know. But it just takes mustard seed. So the Lord is saying to all of us today, you too were in darkness. Be patient, my mm -hmm. Lord. You too were sinful. Now you take up your cross and you follow me. And your cross may be heavy. It may be almost too much to bear. You may feel you're being mocked. You may feel you're being betrayed. Wasn't Jesus betrayed? By his very own. And then what did Judas do when he realized how he had betrayed Jesus? He couldn't live with himself. So the Lord is saying to all of us right now who are doubting, who are frustrated, who are tired, who are about to give up. You know who you are. And it's not only in marriage. It could be a life situation. Maybe you're in a, a, a volatile situation at home, right? Maybe you're in financial troubles. Maybe you, you have done something so terrible. But the Lord is saying, don't give up. With me, there is mercy. And this is the Lord, not me. With him, there is mercy. With him, there is hope, always. Until the day we take our last breath, we can choose him. So with that, we close off our show now. We thank you for joining us. And we ask that you please keep us in your prayers as we keep you in our prayers. Heavenly Father, we come before you with grateful hearts, with thankful hearts, giving you thanks and praise. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to share this message to all who tunes in tonight. We thank you, Jesus, that whatever we have shared, we know will touch someone's heart. We know will have an impact. So we thank you, Jesus, for the words that you've given us, for the enlightenment, for the, for the ability to gather together as one in unity, to pray for each other, and to pray for everyone who's listening to us. So we ask you, Lord, to protect us, to heal all of us and to heal all of, of, of our listeners. Pour your Holy Spirit upon us. Enlighten our minds. Bring us closer to you. Make yourself real to all of our listeners, especially those who are asking and saying, God, where are you? 
make your presence known and make yourself free. And we thank you, Jesus, for all our blessings. And I'd like to say the St. Michael prayer. And sisters, you can join me in this. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him with humbly praise. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today on Be Still My Soul. We will see you next week in another episode of Ephesians. And be still, my soul. Be still, my soul. Thy God doth undertake to guide the future as He has the past. Thy hope, thy Shop easier with Atlantic Bank's chip and contactless cards. Reduce contact and tap your card for purchases of up to $300 on any Atlantic Bank POS machine. Contactless payments, the most convenient way to pay.